Hello, so we're back. Now the big question, why the MOSFETs are getting burned? And I will show you why. Remember my last video? So the last video we found on the ICER uh, Nitro 5, we found uh, two MOSFETs, which you can see that the whole area is burned. And one MOSFET, you know, got shorted probably because of too much heat. But why those MOSFETs are getting burned? Now you remember how we found the laptop. I mean, the laptop was proper dusty with a lot of dust everywhere, including on the heatsink. So what does that mean? Does mean the laptop was overheating? Now overheating is uh, a very tricky term. And you will think you know, overheating is when the laptop is shutting down. Yeah, it's getting hot, it's shutting down. Actually not, yeah? That's the last phase of overheating when actually the laptop is shutting down. But a laptop, I start playing a game and the CPU instantly is going to 100 degrees, that's not overheating. That's how the laptops are working. And I made a video about that, showing how in a good laptop, uh, the, the temperature are going up instantly when you start stressing the hardware. Overheating is when you are doing nothing on your laptop, but your CPU, it's at 100 degrees. Now, all components from the motherboard, you see a bunch of MOSFETs, chips, CPU, GPU, they are using the motherboard as a main heatsink. And the second, like the attached heatsink in the case of the CPU and the GPU. So if the board temperature is increasing, the whole component's temperature is increasing. Now, increasing the temperature the resistance is going up, like the coil resistance, like the MOSFET resistance, and they have to compensate, yeah, obviously using more current in order to supply the demand of the current and uh, the output voltage. So let's do a simple experiment here. We have a motherboard. This is a working motherboard. I connect the HDMI. Let's connect the, let's connect the, the power supply. The power is on the screen, yeah? And I will make the power meter bigger. Okay, so I believe this is better, yeah? So I want you to pay attention on the current. Now I will plug the motherboard. I will start the motherboard. This is an Asus uh, motherboard. Okay, motherboard is on. Okay, so we have our own motherboard. What is the current? 750 milliamps. We have no screen. We have nothing attached like battery. 750 milliamps. Now let's start heating the board. You pay attention, 750, yeah? Now, when you see the current is going down, that's the moment when the CPU is lowering the clock in uh, order to cool itself. We have 81, 82, 83, 84, 85. So we start from 750, right? I believe the current just goes down, right? We can force the, the temperature on the CPU and GPU. 870, 880, 890 milliamps, 900 milliamps, yeah? 900 milliamps. That means my CPU is under 100 degrees. At 100 degrees, the CPU it will shut down. It will lower the clock till the moment. Uh, the temperature, it will still be 100 degrees or over, and it, the board, it will shut down. 
Yeah. So the board shut down. Yeah, the GPU is quite hot. The motherboard is not that hot. I mean, it's around 880 degrees. Did you see actually what current we got? Like 100, 940 milliamps for, from 750? Just because of the heat. Now you'll ask her, if this motherboard is still good? Yeah, it is. It's just, you know, a protection. The motherboard it will shut down and when it will reach um, probably around 100 degrees. Yeah. Check there for a picture and we have the BIOS menu. Yeah. So the motherboard is fine. So that's how overheating process is starting. Yeah. The motherboard is getting hotter and hotter. In the moment, the motherboard is uh, getting hotter. The, mo the moment the heat sink is getting hot, the CPU, it will start lowering the clock. And it will lower the clock a lot, down to probably like 800 megahertz. I mean, let's say you have a 3 gig CPU, it will lower the clock probably down to nearly 800 megahertz. When the clock is down and the temperature is still like 100 degrees and it's pushing over 100, on that moment, indeed, the motherboard, it will shut down. So mainly overheating on a laptop means a very slow laptop because that's the first phase and probably the medium phase when the CPU is lowering the clock. Now, what does this have to do with the MOSFETs? Now, like how I said, yeah, the recoil resistance is going up. The MOSFET internal resistance is going up. That's mean more current. So which MOSFETs are working harder in a case of uh, medium overheating on this motherboard. Which MOSFETs? The one they carry the input power. The first and the second MOSFET. That's the reason why, in a case of low and medium overheating, those MOSFETs, they will get fried first. And obviously, don't ignore, because even the other MOSFETs, they will work like very stressed and on some point, uh, we're gonna find, you know, like the CPU shorted MOSFETs or GPU, like usual. Okay, so I'm gonna stop now. Hopefully, this test was uh, clear for you. I mean, we got so I didn't expect that result. We got like like from 750 to 940, like 300 milliamps on top. That's insane. I didn't expect that. That's mean I increase on the current consumption of what, around 40, 40%, something like that? Yeah, 40% more current means uh, if your laptop is taking three amps, it will take probably like 4.5. Hmm. Impressive, right? So the question is, how we can prevent the MOSFET to get burned? So here is a rabbit hole. The motherboard starting getting more current, Getting more current, the MOSFETs are getting hotter. Getting hotter means a lot of heat. And on that point, uh, you will see the burn uh, uh, MOSFET area, same like on a yesterday video. So how we can prevent overheating? Overheating is very simple to be prevent. Try to open your laptop like every three months, four months, clean the motherboard, clean the heat sink, Replace the thermal paste. And also, if you want to go an extra mile, do what I usually do. If you've seen that video, we love for your electronics. You know, my almost all my devices, they have inside thermal pads and trying to send the heat away from the electronic components. On the laptop case, you can uh, use the back of the keyboard or the back case to send the heat using thermal pads. So before I'm stopping this video, I will repeat one more time, yeah? One more time. Cool motherboard, low current consumption, less heat. Okay, have this in mind, have this in mind. So I'm gonna stop here. I will say uh, thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoy the video. Don't forget, you can press the like button, you can eventually subscribe, and see you on the next one. Bye.